keep, can you do one more? <laughs> I know the track record of my people, so I'm going to stop that right now, and I'm going to burn my portion of the business so I can't go back, so I can only go towards where the blessing is. Amen? Woo, Jesus. Amen. I like that. Well, I want to talk about tonight, today. I just really want to bless your hearts today with, with a t- message title that, that uh, was actually given to me by my son-in-law, John, and it's uh, life. Well, let, let's, just, let's just think about this for a second. Life at the museum. You've heard the movie Night at the Museum. This is life at the museum. So what I want to do is I want to talk about a museum just for a little bit. A museum is a place that we go visit. Nothing ever changes in a museum. It stays the same. No matter how many times you go visit a museum, the dinosaur bones are still going to be dinosaur bones. They're not going to come to life. You can't go visit the museum where there, is, where there once was and try to bring that back to life again. It's just, it's just not going to happen. You can do it as often as you want, but it's not going to happen. So, so if you spend your whole life in a museum, it's really not going to benefit you that much. You see, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a memory, but but it's not a memory that you can take into the future because you can't recreate what was in the past and then make it come to life again. It's just never going to happen. That's why it's called a museum. It's kind of like this gym I used to go to about five or six years ago, maybe seven years ago. Well, no, actually it was 2000. It was 9-11. It was during the 9-11 time. So I go to this gym, right? And I never could understand that. You're going to know the name of it, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to say it publicly. But you go to this gym and you work out. And if you're used to working out with, with heavy weights, you know, then, then you want to lift heavy weights. You don't want them to de- take the weights out because they want it to be a, a no-free judgment zone. It's kind of like defeating the purpose for people that want to lift these weights. And then if you actually are pushing the weights and you're like, Aah! then all of a sudden this alarm goes off and calls you a lunk. And tells you you got to leave the gym. So, but that's not the bad part. But the, the part that confuses me, it's kind of like an oxymoron type thing, is on Mondays they have bagels and donuts <laughs> at the gym. Bagels and donuts at the gym. And then sometimes on Monday nights they would have free pizza. And I think it's their way of guaranteeing that you keep revisiting their museum. There's no progression made, you know? 20 minutes on the cardio, two donuts, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. See, that's the same way with our life. We can't keep going in the museum and expect to get results. Amen? I'm not going to mention that gym. So maybe some of you go to it, and that's all right. It's, it's not a bad gym, but it's just not one I'm going to go to because I don't like donuts. But anyway, so sometimes we rehearse our past so much. We rehearse the past in our lives so much. We train ourselves that we should, we should live our life that way. And God delivers us from our past. He delivers us from our past relationships. But what we do is we end up recreating our past because that's what we're used to living, life at the museum. And we recreate our past. The only thing we do is we create it with someone new. But it's the same one as the old. It's just a different person. Same, we, can, we take the same qualities in the next person that we, we find, and that person is no different than the last one. Just because it's new, it looks fresh, but it's no different than the one you just left in the museum. It's no different than the one that God just delivered you from. Sometimes we rehearse our past successes so much that God can't bring us to a new level of success in the future because we're still trying to do it the way we did it the last time. Does this make sense? Life at the museum. You know, this, this always freaked me out when I read it in the Bible. You got the Old Testament where the Israelites cried out to God from their heart, please deliver us from our bondage, God, and he delivers them. He sends Moses to deliver his people from bondage, and the first opportunity they get, they want to go back to the museum again. So they get out of bondage, and they're walking two and a half million people across this, this 
parcel of land, and they get to this, this body of water. And can you imagine when they're looking at the body of water? And they're thinking, this is going to be great. See, you don't think of the museum when everything's going well. You only think of the museum when the pressure is on. So while they're looking at the beautiful water rushing into the shore and all, the, and just imagining we're free, we're no longer slaves, we're no longer in bondage. God heard our prayer. God heard our cry. Great are you, Lord. You're wonderful. You did everything you said. Oh, Jesus. Well, it wasn't around then, but I'm crying out, Jesus. Oh, God, Abba, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Great I am. You did everything you said you were going to do. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of their praise, like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you're so fa-. What was that? Did you hear that? I heard that. Did you hear that? What was that I heard? Did you hear that? I heard something. Did you hear something? And they turn around, and the entire Egyptian army is starting to, is coming at them. Now their story changes. Rather than trust God and go forward, they say, oh no, Moses, we can't go that way, and they're coming this way. We're about to meet our demise. What is going on here? Were there not enough graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to die in the desert? Does God not love us that he should take us from here and bring us out here because he didn't want to bury us with the Egyptians, so he thought he'd kill us out here? Is it a da-da and a thing, and it's thing, and a complain, and complain, and I'm going to go to the museum and why aren't these dinosaur bones moving? And why is this guy just staring at me? Every time I go to the museum, it's stagnant. Nobody moves. Everybody does the same thing. But I go back there to try and find something different. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. So Moses says, I'm going to show you your future. And he lifts his staff and splits the water in two. And says, I'm going to show you a new thing. I am not no longer doing the old thing. I'm doing a new thing. So quit going back to the museum or you're going to miss what I got now. Ooh, Jesus. First time. Now they see the Red Sea split. They cross over. They're safe. They watch the water collapse on their enemies that were about to destroy them and annihilate them and their families. And all of a sudden, they're thirsty. There's no water, so they complain. We should have went back to Egypt. They have plenty of water back in Egypt. Moses strikes the rock. Water comes out of it. We don't like this food. We're tired of this food. Same thing every day. We don't have to farm. We don't have to do anything, but we're still tired of this manna. We should have went back to Egypt. At least there was meat in Egypt. Complain, complain, complain. God hears the cry of our hearts, but because we don't let him answer it the way he wants, we think he's not going to do it. So we take a trip back to the museum so that we could stare at our past and dream about that, never entering into our promised future. Somebody say amen. You hearing what I'm saying out there? All right, good. I like that. Um, Let me just keep moving forward. Isaiah chapter 43. Now listen, listen to God back in Isaiah who's prophesying the cross. He's prophesying Jesus. You have to understand he's talking about Jesus here. But look at our God, because what he said to Isaiah, he's going to say to you too. Isaiah 43, verse 16, this is what the Lord says. He says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. That's what I'm just talking about right now who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again. He extinguished them, snuffed them out like a wick. That's what our God did. That's what our God did. That's our museum thinking. We're going to remember that. It's not a bad thing to remember, but watch what he says in verse 19. He says, see... He said, verse 18, excuse me. He says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. I did great things here, but my track record is not based on what I did. My track record is going to be based on what I'm about to do, but you're not going to see it unless you trust me all the way. Quit looking back. He says right here, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Verse 19, he says, see, I am doing a new thing. I'm about to bring newness into the world that they have never seen before. It's going to last for eternity. I'm about to bring this, this, I'm about to bring the son of the most high God, the salvation, the forgiveness of your sins, greater blessings than the splitting of the Red Sea. Go ahead, give him a God. Come on, you can't handle it. Give it to him. Glory to God. 
I'm about to do a new thing. He says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. The wild animals are going to honor me. The jackals and the owls, because they have provided water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people that I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. You don't proclaim it if you can't feel it. He is so confident in what he's about to bring into the world that he's trying to get you to lock the door to your your museum and look at the future. He's trying to get you to stay out of what he did in the past because you're going to miss what he's going to do in the future. Why? Because you're going back looking at dry bones in a museum, dinosaur bones and people of the past, and you're going to miss the glory of who he's about to bring on the scene in the future. The son of the living God, the most high, the great I am on earth to take everything from us that the enemy stole and give it back to us. Amen. 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 Ooh, somebody say amen. I didn't hear it loud enough in here. Come on. Now, every level of your life, it's like a, it's like a step to the next level. It's a progression. Ella, come with me, if you would, baby. You see this ladder right here? I'm going to show you what I just read. I'm going to kind of explain it to you in a, in a slight little visual that I hope, you can, I hope you can see. So you got all these layers of your life right here. This is where we go, right here. The object is to get to the top. If, it were, if we were playing a game, the object would be to get to the top. Come on up here, Ella. Thank you, baby. So I'm going to use her as an example. Climb on that first step right there. I hope you're not afraid of ladders. I didn't think of asking you. Go ahead. Stand up there. Okay. Now, this is a a child beginning her first rung in life. There's not much going wrong. But if she's going to progress in life, if you're going to see the new thing that he's doing, because he says, I'm doing a new thing. It's about to spring up. If he's doing a new thing, you can't be about the old thing. Somebody say amen. Amen. So you got to go to the new thing, which is the next level up. Go ahead. Now, as you go to this level here, you got to be so confident in the new thing that you destroy that right there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, so now do me a favor. I want you to just turn around, stay on that step. There you go. Now jump off. Boom. She's not hurt. She didn't have nothing happen to her. So get back up here again on this second step. You see, this one is gone. Climb to this one. You're going to do a new thing. You're doing his new thing. Go ahead, climb up here. You're taking off this, this, and this no longer exists. Forget the former. Forget what I did. If you don't forget what I did, you're not going to see the new thing. If you keep trying to turn around and go back to Egypt, you're going to eventually get high enough. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. This step is gone. Keep climbing. Keep. Can you do one more? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay stay right there let's just imagine she's about a hundred feet up now okay (laughs) this 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 and this is gone he said clearly in the scriptures he said forget the former things and do not dwell on the past don't look here anymore or you're going to miss what's up there what we do is we get so panicked of our future because we can't see it that we try to we try to climb back down, except the higher you climb, there's only one, more, one way to go, and that's the continued way forward into his hands. He puts you in a place where you have to trust him. And if she were to turn around right now, let's just imagine her way up, and jump off, it would be to her demise. You see, you climb and forget the things of the past, forget the former, so you can get to the next victory. Amen? Somebody say amen if you got a hold of that. Thank you, Ella. Try to get down very carefully, baby. Don't hurt yourself. Now, for those that are watching online, they're saying, but she's not supposed to be able to climb down. Come on, man. Get with it. Thank you, baby. Love you. See you. How many people just understood that? Forget the former. It doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to forget it. You can go live in the museum if you'd like it. No one's going to stop you living in the museum. So keep, let's keep going. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. It says this. I love this. It says, because the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails us. Think about that. His compassion never fails us. Your life is failing you. Your hope is failing you. You've got things that are all around you that are failing you. But it says his compassion never fails you. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. He's not going to fail you. You're going to fail you. This is going to fail you. If you try to go back to Egypt, you're not going to go back to the bondages of Egypt. You're not going to 
do that. He says, go to the new thing and forget the former thing. Because why? Because my compassion never fails you. He says, they're new every morning. You're going to get up tomorrow morning with the challenges of yesterday, but he's got a new plan to, to accomplish what was in today. Don't, don't go back to yesterday. Don't try to climb back down again. Keep your eyes focused on the new thing he's going to do. But I don't know what the new thing is. Well, if you knew it, you'd try to make it happen yourself. If you knew it, you wouldn't need him anymore. Amen? He, he moves on your faith. Draw near to me, I draw near to you. Draw near to me, I draw near to you. Draw away from me, I draw away from you. Why does he do that? He's a gentleman. To see how that works? So, 1 Kings, I like, I like 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. Now, Elijah, Elijah the prophet was told by God to go, go lay his cloak on Elisha, his successor. But I want, you to, I want you to see Elisha. Now, don't get the ja and the sha mixed up. But Elisha, the younger one, I want you to see what happens when he decides to climb the ladder all the way and not look back. This is what he says right here. Watch this. So, Elijah departed from where, from where he was with God. He found Elisha, son of Shabbat. And while he was plowing with 12 pairs of oxen before him, that's 24 ox, and, he, and he, he was with the 12th one. He was operating the 12th one. Elijah went over to him, threw his mantle, his coat on him, and left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, he left it. He left it. He's like, whoa, I got, I got Elijah's coat on me. So he takes off. He runs after Elijah. And he says, please let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye. And then I will follow you. And he said to him, go, uh, go on for what have I done to stop you? Elijah's like, I'm not forcing you to follow me. Don't miss this. I'm just telling you God said to if you want to climb your ladder, I suggest you follow me. I'm not making you follow me. I'm just telling you what God told me to do. I'm not telling everybody here and everybody watching online to believe the word of God. I'm not telling you to stay out of your museum. I'm just telling you what happens if you do. I'm not telling you to believe what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what God told me to say. I am not telling you to go go kiss your mom and dad goodbye. I'm not telling you to follow me and I'm not telling you to stay. I'm just telling you what God said. When you can understand the concept that God puts the ball in your hands and the blessings in your hands and all you have to do is climb the ladder removing the step behind you which is gonna keep you from going back to Egypt, then you can go on and understand the concept of what he says when he says, here, watch what Elijah, Elisha says. I'm not trying to stop you, he says. So Elijah left him, went back. Then, I love this, I love that word then. Then he took a pair of oxen, the one he was with, and sacrificed them, boiled their meat and the, imp and the implements of the oxen as fuel and gave the meat to the people and they ate and then he stood and he followed Elijah and he served him. He's the one that got the double portion from Elijah. He's got the blessings from Elijah. He got the blessings from God because he followed Elijah. But what he did was he says, I don't know about the rest of you, but as for my part of the business, my pair of ox and my ox cart, I'm going to no longer need this anymore. So I'm going to burn my ox cart, use it as fire to burn my ox, and I'm going to give you my life, my past, because I'm going to a new thing. I'm not going to stay to where I am. I'm not going to plow this field anymore because God's got a plan for me over there. I'm climbing all the way up to the top, and I'm going to drop every step bound down the bottom because I am no longer going to need to be there anymore. I'm I'm going to go here. I know the past of Israel. I remember when they came out of Egypt. I remember when they complained and wanted to go back. I know the track record of my people, so I'm going to stop that right now, and I'm going to burn my portion of the business so I can't go back, so I can only go towards where the blessing is. Amen? <laughs> Woo, Jesus. I'll tell you what. This has blessed me every time, every time I read it. The only reason, folks... The only reason that you ever want to revisit a museum is to recognize the faithfulness of God. Not the miracles of God, but his faithfulness. 
David revisited the museum to remember the faithfulness of God when the lion and the bear attacked him, but then went out and threw a rock and killed the giant. You see, Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel can reflect back when they were in that prayer, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and they said, Lord, are you not the God who did this, this, and this? We don't know the new thing you want to do, but we're going to base it on the faithfulness of how you were, but we're ready or keep our eyes upon on you to watch the new that's about to take place. Everybody that's listening to my voice right now, online, in this room, if you could just understand, he's got a new thing for you. With Jesus, it's new every morning. The reason you have depression and oppression and anxiety and fear and, and stress is because you can't see the new thing. You're not supposed to see the new thing. You're supposed to seek after the new thing, and the new thing will bring you into the blessings of tomorrow. Amen? If he, you need him. We can't. That's why people say, I don't know what I need to be saved from. You need to be saved from you. You need to be saved from your fear, from your, from your lack of faith, from your un, the inability to be able to see tomorrow in which God can and the faithfulness of God that says, I will take you into that tomorrow. Otherwise, stay out of the museum because the museum is, listen, everything's dead in the museum. Every time you go to a museum, is dead. There's nothing living in there. It's old. It's old. It's got rockets that are dead. It's got animals that are dead and, 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 and tribes that were dead. So if you, if you want to live your life at the museum in your, your own life, then you're just living your life in your own cemetery. You're living your life in what is dead yesterday. It's dead. You can't go back. Why would you want to do that? You got to live to where tomorrow is. I know, it's, I know it's getting in you because this is how we are. This is the enemy's job is to remind us to visit the museum. And God's like, I want you to forget the former things. And I want you to reflect on the hope of tomorrow. I got a new thing coming. I got a new thing for you. I got a brand new thing for you. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not based on how your today is, and it's not based on how much you love me. It's based on the new thing. Will you, will you let me do it? Will you let me do it, he says? Will you keep climbing? Will you keep trusting me? Will you keep trying to look back at your museum and visit the old days? I remember that day. Oh, that's when I met my wife 37 years ago. I remember that. I wish she loved me like that. How she used to love me when I first met her. Heck, if she still loved me like, like she did when I first met her, we wouldn't be together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that love ain't going to sustain me. It's the today's love that sustains me. Amen? You see, you're visiting a museum, and what do you do in a museum? What do you do in your museum? You daydream. You daydream. You, 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 stare at the, you stare at the past, and you bring it back to life. And then you go... That's it. I'm doing that again. And then you go back out and fall flat on your face because what was, it's not going to be. Because it's a new thing. Say, it's a new thing. Say it again. Say, it's a new thing. Say, God is doing a new thing. Come on, man. I like that. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm talking about here. Night at the Museum. You heard that movie, Night at the Museum? Remember, the only way everything in the museum came to life when the, as long as the tablet of Akman Ra was there. Then, then everything in the museum came to, night, to life after dark. And so we have to understand that in our museum, we'll use that as a metaphor, and I don't want people online going, oh, so we, you guys worship tablets over there. No, no, we don't do that. I'm just using it as a metaphor. And you say, well, Joe, why do you always say it? Because I, I'll get an email by somebody telling me that you, you shouldn't talk about museum tablets in the presence of Jesus. <laughs> Sinful, satanic worshiping church you have. <laughs> but we're going to take it as a metaphor and we're going to say that without the blood of Jesus nothing comes to life nothing comes to life if you choose to visit your museum without the blood of Jesus then it remains dead if you choose to, to visit your museum with the blood of Jesus then he becomes alive in you and what's the first thing he's going to do take you out of your museum to where he's got you amen so with that, I want to say, you visit your museum to remember his faithfulness. That's it. 
because he's new every morning. Not only are my blessings new every morning, okay, don't miss this, but the way I'm going to bless you is new every morning. Not only are my blessings new, not only do I have something new, not only are my blessings new, but the way I'm going to do it is going to be completely different. So if you're in the museum seeing tomorrow's blessings based on yesterday's blessings, you're going to miss it. Amen. What, what, let me tell you something. Today, today I may bring you a job. Tomorrow, I may want you to take authority and go take the job. Amen. Somebody say amen out there. I mean, somebody say amen. amen. Tomorrow, he may just want you to go take authority because in the taking of the authority is like Moses striking the rock versus him speaking to the rock. You see, when he struck the rock, when Moses struck the rock, that was in the museum days. He struck it because everything he did was with that staff. Now, God said, I'm going to bring you to a new place, a new venture, a promised land that's going to go on for all eternity, and I no longer need you to use a prop anymore. I need you to become who I've created you in my image, that which is of the spoken word and authority. I need you to emulate me so that the authority that I have when I speak, I can give to you. Now, speak to the rock, Moses, and watch what happens. But he chose not to because he was living in his museum. Amen? He said, today I may tell you to take authority over something. Tomorrow I may tell you to be gentle and kind. I'm doing a new thing. You can't see tomorrow. Only I can. Today I may tell you to fight, as he told the Israelites with Jericho. Tomorrow I may tell you to just march. I'll fight for you. It's a new thing. We don't know. Today I may tell you to worship me for the answer. Tomorrow I may tell you to be still and quiet and wait for the answer. You're not going to hear God if you're always at your museum. you got to be outside the museum doing a new thing. I say it. I'll say it again what I just said. Today, I may tell you to strike the rock, Moses. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you to speak to the rock. You see how this works? Your blessings are about to begin. The devil doesn't like this day. Those of you watching online, whenever you watch this. The devil doesn't like this moment because you're getting a hold of something that's going to defeat him. He wants you in your past. He wants you to climb high on the ladder. And when you get all the way up and you start to panic, he wants you to jump off to your demise. Stop looking at Egypt. God closed the, the, the bridge so you can't get back. He shut the water. It wasn't just to destroy the enemy. It was to say, you need go back no more. Amen? Amen. So with all that, let me, just, let me just start to wrap this thing up here if I could. Romans chapter, tw- chapter 4, I, I love what it says in verse 17. Watch this. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He's talking about Abraham. In the presence of him, God, whom he, Abraham, believed, God who gives life to the dead, oh, come on, and calls those things which are not, do not exist as if though they do exist. God is about to call things in your life that don't exist as if they do exist, but you can't go in the museum while he's talking to you. A- Moses, I mean, Abraham, if he'd have went back in his museum, which he kind of did in the beginning, he goes back in the museum and he's like, you want me to have a child? Look at me. I'm like uh, almost 75 years old. I'm too old. My wife is old. She's, look at how old she, look at her. I mean, I can't, there's not even Botox that can fix my wife at this point. She is, she's, every time I look at her, I get the, I get the urge to iron everything in sight. Look at her, God. And you say, what are you talking about, Joe? Moses was like, I mean, Abraham, excuse me, was like, if I, could just, if I could just be young again, then I can have a child. God says, no, 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 Abraham, I'm doing a new thing. I need you to understand the new thing. He told him that when he was 75, Is, Is, um, uh, his, his son, his promised son, not Ishmael, but Isaac, didn't come till he was 100 He waited 25 years for this to come. God says, oh, you think 75 is old? (laughs) It's not coming to your 100. (laughs) Think about it. Because it's a new thing. But God, it doesn't work that way because in the past, we don't have kids this old. I know this. Forget the former and remember and look towards the new thing I got because the new thing Isaiah was talking about was Jesus. And with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. All right, I think you're getting a hold of this. So Abraham believed him. 
And by his faith, he had Isaac. But I want to ask you this question. I want to ask those watching online. Is your faith based out of the outcome of your circumstances? Is your faith determined by the outcome of your circumstances? Think about that for a second. Do you only believe if you get the outcome the way you want it? Do you only believe if you get what you want when you want it? Because if that's the case, the enemy can steal your faith that fast. God comes to instruct, direct, protect, and, 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 and correct you. But we don't let him do that. We just, we're so busy going back to our museum that we forget that, man, God says this. If, if your faith is based out of the outcome of your circumstances, the devil will create a perfect storm every time to get you to not believe. He will always take you back to your museum. If your faith wasn't, if your faith won't last, then, hold on, skip that. If, you, if your faith is based on your outcome, then rather than move forward, you go back to your museum because the enemy can steal your faith just like that. If your faith is based on the outcome of your past, then you won't move to your future. So many people in this room believe based on their past. What are you saying, Joe? Watch this. I prayed for that person. They weren't healed. Why would I want to do it again? I prayed for that job. I never got it. It's not going to happen again. It's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. His faith, his compassion is new. His blessings are new. His miracles are new. The only situation we have to worry about is if we can keep ourselves out of the museum or not. Because if we keep going back to our museum, we're trying to recreate and relive the past. Not only is God not there, not only will it never come back to life again, but even if it did come back to life, it wouldn't work because he's doing a new thing. You see what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it getting a hold of you right now? Some of you are getting there going, so that's the problem. Exactly. That is the issue right there that you face, is your yesterday is determining your tomorrow. Don't let the enemy do this to you. God, I'm sorry, we need to see, watch this now. We need to see the sorrowful moments in our life as joy. We need to see that. We need to, we need to reflect that the sorrowful moments in our life are joy, even if they're not joy. And we need to see the progression in the midst of our recession. Everybody has to understand. Look for the progression in the midst of your recession. Look for the hope, the new thing that is coming, not based on the old thing. Understand that God has a new way, not based on the old way. Under, understand we need to walk con- continuously forward, not go back in the museum. When you can begin to understand that, then you can look throughout history of of, of the past, but you can look into your future, and you can understand your future based on the happenings and the faithfulness of God's past. Watch this. Father of many nations, Abraham has no kids. How's he going to be the father of of many nations? I'm going to feed 5,000, but we have no food. Lazarus will live even though he is dead. Fire will not burn you. Lions will not eat you, and hell will never have you. Amen? Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. With that said, keep your eyes on Jesus and stay out of the museum. And never forget that God loves you more than you even want to be loved. Amen? That's all I got. Stand up with me. We don't want to leave you today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Word says that the only way to the Father is through the Son. Take a moment and repent for your sins and ask God to help you follow Him on this journey. It's an amazing journey that will bless your life on earth and in eternity. If you've made the decision to follow Jesus today, be sure to get into a church that teaches the Word of God, and don't forget to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at orlandofamilychurch.com or 407-462-1358. We'd love to see you. Our church services are every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Hope to see you soon.